Hello, my friend, and welcome back to the channel. It's time for your daily dose of Brood War, and what a day it is indeed. We've got Jadong here, spawning in the top right-hand corner, versus Flash down in the bottom right. An auspicious day here, and a match made in heaven. Seven games of Flash versus Jadong. It, it's poetic, really. That these two met so many times on the first day that Flash is returning. These were played on June 17th. And maybe it's not actually the first day he came back. But this is when things have really been confirmed. I'm going to show you guys a video from Jin Jin. Of the pro players confirming his identity. That'll be right after this first game. So stick around for that. But we've got so many games coming up here guys. So many awesome awesome games to look forward to and then i i didn't believe it i didn't know i didn't think that it would ever happen flash is actually back if you don't know the controversy he's been through i'll put a link up here on this top right hand corner of the screen screen after that crypto controversy i thought maybe he was just done i thought he might never come back of course i had hopes that he might brave the controversy. He might brave, you know, the, the difficulties of coming back to all the fans and, and trying to stream and trying to play again on ladder. But And maybe even in the ASL, but I didn't know that it was going to happen. And I'm so glad that it has. We've got Flash here. Starting out with the scout. He finds Jadong immediately. He's going to start to surround him or... Spin around him here, just checking out what's going on. And yeah, I have news that Flash is supposed to be back to streaming here shortly. And if he's going to stream, the chances of him actually competing in ASL are very, very high, I would say. I was thinking about the over-under. I was thinking about the likelihood of him actually coming back into the scene and where I put that value. What uh, percent chance I would put on that. And it wasn't actually looking too high. But now that he's coming back to streaming. Or he uh, has plans to come back to streaming. Or at least we have Korean people. Uh, and influencers who are saying that he's planning to come back to streaming. Friends of his that are saying that that is his plan. I think the chances of us seeing him in an ASL are very high. Maybe ASL or Soup, the Season 1, the SSL, or maybe the ASL uh, 18, whatever you want to call it. Uh, we might end up seeing like a Flash Soul Key Finals. I think that would be the best case scenario. Can you imagine Flash versus Soul Key Finals in an ASL? That would be absolutely fantastic. But we're getting ahead of ourselves here. We've got one of the greats, one of the legends himself. One of the players who's probably had the most matches against Flash in uh, competitive play. Or at least the most finals um, against Flash. This is Jadong here. He's been practicing. He's been streaming and competing at a very high level recently. Hasn't had the greatest results in ASL, but... Maybe this is what lights the fire in his belly here with his old competition coming back into the fray. Maybe he's going to really liven up here and start you know, really competing and trying to, to take another ASL championship. That would be insane as well. Imagine a Jadong versus Flash ASL championship uh, finals. That would be crazy. We're seeing a two... Uh, Hatchery play here from Jadong. Nothing really significant has happened so far. Aside from Flash really getting the absolute optimization out of this early game build. He didn't build a Marine until after he started the second uh, barracks here. He's going to build two Fire Bats to try and uh, shore up the defenses here. In case Ling run by does happen. And it will in fact. Running in here trying to look for some... SCV kills, but not able to get them. Two sunken colonies being built back at home, but they're not quite done yet. And if we hit the stim button, we might be able to get in here in time to kill this sunken colony. Okay, probably not going to get the sunken colony here. 
Uh, the medics are just a little bit too far back. And he lost a few too many marines. That's a little bit unfortunate. Running now into the main base. One kill. Two kills here. Firebats chasing. But not able to catch up to these marines or these uh, lings just yet. Now marines going to pop out here. Some of them going to die. Great trading out of Jadong so far. He holds the attack. But he was forced to build a bunch of lings. So he wasn't able to make all mutilus. Um at that critical timing. He is still going to get quite a few out, which I'm kind of surprised about. Oh, can he get this? Oh, he is going to get that nice scan there to get rid of the Overlord over top of the natural. Critical timing here to kill that Overlord as well. It's going to force three Overlords to be produced here for Jadong. And he won't be able to make any drones over here at kind of a critical moment when you want to start mining this gas as soon as possible. So... This is pretty good for Flash. Even though he was denied and forced back home. He forced out the two Sunkins. He forced the Lings. He killed the Overlord. These are all very good things for him. And a second gas going to start up here pretty quickly. The factory is coming along quite quickly as well. Just a factory off of two racks. And he's not even making anything off the racks. Which makes me a little bit confused. I'm not sure exactly what we're going for here. Is he going to go into Valkyrie? I don't have an armory yet, but it's still a little early yet, uh, at this point. Third barracks starts up. A Firebat's made its way across the map. Uh, might roam over to here eventually. It's going to check 12 o'clock. Not going to find anything there. But... Let's see if he scanned top left. No, he hasn't scanned top left yet. Good chance this Firebat's on a, a shift click, though. And it may end up going all the way over here eventually. I don't think Jadong's going to spot that. Unlikely this will get any kills with 6 HP. It's just two drone hits away from being dead. Lurker aspect on the way here. Queen's Nest coming up as well. We should see Jadong switching into uh, that later game. Uh, with Sunkins and Lurkers over here at the top left to defend. He will have that free base over in the top left. That free fourth. Oh, one drone going to go down here. Just fight it. Fight it. Fight it, Jadong. What are we doing? Oh, no. He, he hasn't clicked on it. That's unfortunate. He could have just killed that. Now he's going to lose a lot of mining time here. Yeah, that's, that is unfortunate. We'll get back to mining pretty quickly, but yeah, one lost drone and a bunch of mining time. That definitely does hurt. 900 gas in the bank right now. Some lurkers are going to spawn here in a moment's, moment's time. 11 mutas are kind of skirting the edges of the base for now. And going up to five racks here. Nothing super out of the ordinary just yet, but a, uh, uh, a tank is being produced right now. So he actually is going to go for a tank push. Now, this could be really strong. One of the key parts of this map, and I think that Flash uh, definitely is planning to abuse this, is that if you park the tank right there, you can actually hit this gas, which is significant. If you can start to damage that gas here as well, hit this gas, you can deny that for a, a significant amount of time. You can really put the Zerg player behind in the curve of the game. And it might actually be worth it. Now, oh, the tank is actually going to get picked off. That's rough. Tank gets lost here. Flash. Well. I mean, his timing is kind of ruined now. Is he still going to finish Siege Mode? Looks like he will let that finish. And another tank starts. But only one tank moving across the map. That certainly isn't very scary here. Going after the vessel now. There's just a little bit more energy. Until he can use one of these irradiates. He has that energy now. Gonna continue to move forward here. Oh, Lurker's getting some great volleys. Going after the science vessel. He gets it. He's got to pull out that one Muta, and he does so very, very well. Wow, Jadong putting on a great show here so far. He's handling this very well, but his Nidus is late. Oh my gosh. Wait a second. Is he just going to lose right now? Lurker's coming around. We've got the tank. We've got the medics back here. Medics are really trailing right now. One tank over here. That's probably going to end up dying. Yeah, it does die, but 
doesn't even matter. All these are going to end up going down. All these drones. He loses the third base. He's going to attack and just try to go across the map. Man. Those mutas get absolutely wrecked. And Jadong, I mean, the Nidus is late. What can you say? The Nidus was very, very late. We've already got Crater Spire. Oh my goodness. Why, are we, why do we have Crater Spire? That is craziness. I guess he wanted to use it to counter the tank push. But he didn't have enough over here in the top left. Now, these units need to get moving because we have to uh, make sure that the Defiler push doesn't kill us. He will irradiate that Defiler. Defiler does not have consume. And GG is called. Yeah, that Defiler is not going to be able to get his spell off. A little bit sloppy here from Jadong, but Flash showing his prowess. Executing this tank push. Didn't get to use the uh, tricks that I was talking about earlier, but just finding an opening and pushing on through. That's game number one, guys. Let's jump into game number two. 이제는 좀 편하게 이기를 해도 될것 같은데 어 영호가 이번 달 늦어도 다음 달 안에는 복귀를 한다 그러더라고요. 그래서 뭐 내일 모레 이사도 가고 그래갖고 방송 세팅을 한다 그러더라고. 어 근데 영호는 복귀를 하면 당분간은 갬방을 할 거예요. 예. 뭐 작년부터 재작년부터 연보성이랑 저랑 뭐 연보성 아 이영호 좀 있으면 돌아온다 했는데 이제는 진짜 확실해진 것 같습니다. 예. 아 여러분들 보세요. 야이야 이거 야 이거 탱칸으로 한방 나간다고 한방 러시를 여러분들 진짜 이거를 영어로 생각한다면은 영어에 대한 모독입니다 모독 영어를 모욕하지 마세요. 여러분들 상대 적어는 그냥 아마추어죠 뭐 누구야 아마추어죠 상대 적어도 여러분들 제동형이라 소문나 있거든요 여러분들이 지금 보시는 게 리쌍록인 거예요 그러면은 말이 돼요? 말이 안 된다니까? 지금 이 여러분들 보시는 이 리플이 리쌍록인 거야 그러면은 아니라니까 진짜? 엥? 아유 아닐걸 진짜네. 일단 제동형은 맞고 그럼 이용호가 맞는지 아닌지 일단 봐볼게요. 잠깐만. 솔직히 말할게요. 100%. 아 이거는 솔직히 그냥 100%예요. 그냥 오락가락 하는 거지 100%야. 어. 여러분들. 아 너무 나 너무 티내면서 한다 근데. 맞아. 아 나랑 할 때는 일주일 만에 게임해서 그런가 봐. 아 너무 티내면서 해. 아이 게임이랑 레트로 게임 제동용이랑 한거 보니까 맞아. 익명 테란이 있잖아요. 왜 아포칼립스에서만 메카닉을 하는 줄 알아요, 여러분들? 이유를 알려드릴까요, 제가? 아니죠. 근데 꾸준함이 중요하긴 해요, 그죠 형님? 이유가 뭐냐면 여러분들. 어센션이랑 비슷한 똑같이 생긴 맵이라서 그러니까 메카닉을 하는 조건이 있어요 뱉던 메카닉이나 생던 메카닉을 하는 조건이 있어 투아머리를 하는 맵의 조건이 있는데 상대 오버가 내 가스통을 못 보는 맵이어야 돼 지금 오버 세면 가스 안 보이죠 어센션도 안 보였어 그래서 그때 나온 맵 빌드가 이거야 가스가 안 보이는 맵이어야 되고 그거가 좁혀져야 되고 미네랄이 열덩인 맵이 더 좋아 쓰기 그래서 하는 거야 그래서 이 맵에서만 영어가 지금 메카닉 하는 거야 어, 이맵 메카닉이 좋겠네 해서 하는 거야 진짜 여러분들 어. 어 지금 왜 3,4,5이 있지 네. 맨날 하던 거거든 옛날에 진짜 어. 이게 진짜야 영어 맞아 하는 거 보니까 맞아 어 맞아요 어. 그러니까 쓰는 맵이 딱 있었어 옛날부터 원래 이게 쓰는 맵 공식이 폴리같이 안 만나 가스 보이는 맵은 안 쓰고 안 만나 가스 안 보이는 맵만 썼어요 어. 저 찐이야 아 무조건이야 무조건 동시 투하머리? 아, 영, 아 영어가 지금 영어라고 광고하고 다닌다니까 여러분들 내가 봤을 땐 광고하고 다닌다니까 지금 
영우가 영어라고 광고하고 다니다니까요. 게임을. 이런 네. 이런 느낌이 나야 돼 게임에. 그래. 이런 느낌이야. 이런 느낌. 아까 나랑 할때 이런 느낌이 아니었어. 나랑 한 사람이 짭인가 보다 보면. 아니 아니 여러분들 이 게임이랑 아까 나랑 한 게임이랑 보면 다르다니까 아예. 아예 달라 아예. 어, 모르겠어 나도 나도 모르게 나도 답답한 거야 이 느낌. 그러니까 이 정도 최적화 나와야 이용우라는 소리 나오지. 나랑 할 때는 여러분들 진짜 나나 칠백인데 이 사백이었다니 삼백이었다니까 상대. 여러분들. 야, 이 정도면 뭐 거의 야 영어가 방송을 하고 있는 거 아니야 여러분들? 이사 한 것도 알고 이사 완료한 것도 알고 이사 한 이후에 첫 판인 것도 알고 여러분들 뭐이 영어 방송이에요 요새? 영어 피셜 같아 다 모든 게 아니 진짜 아 근데 만약에 진짜 그 익명 테란이 영어면 야 진짜 재밌긴 하겠다 All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed that translated video courtesy of Jin Jin. Uh, he told me that it was fine to use that for this video to just explain a little bit more and ease some of your guys' minds uh, who are maybe skeptical whether this is Flash or not. All of the Korean uh, people think so. All the Korean pros think that this is Flash. And there have been announcements recently about him returning to streaming, so... I'll put your mind at ease there. This man, Flash, is back potentially for some competitive play in the future. Definitely for ladder and maybe for streaming as well. I'm really looking forward to I hope that we see Jin Jin do a translation video uh, for the first stream that Flash comes back. I'm sure he's going to get some blowback. But I bet there is going to be a ton of love uh, in that stream as well, though. Uh, I might even be in there as well. Uh, just to experience it. That's a very, very exciting time. Now, Jadon getting a little bit embarrassed in that first game, honestly. That is uh, pretty rough. You should be able to hold on to that natural. The timing was just off. Lurkers were made out in the middle of the map, but that's something that jadong has been struggling with a lot that I've I've noticed with his play is he likes to come out and try to catch the Marines with the Lurkers at the beginning. He's not very passive with his Lurkers. Like, he's not the type of player who just builds Lurkers to sit in his natural stacked uh, between two Sunkins and, and just wait. He likes to move out with his Lurkers and try to make something happen uh, with Lurker Muta. Pretty much every game that I've seen and sometimes it goes well sometimes it goes horribly wrong and in that game flash was just all over it he got the scan on the top left he saw that the lurkers weren't there the nidus wasn't there and he made his move immediately takes out that base and just seals the fates here for Jadong's first game but now Jadong is serious now maybe you meet someone on a barcode on the ladder you're not uh, sure that they're truly uh, any good. I don't know if Jadong knew um, from the video that we saw from uh, Jadong. It, or it didn't seem like he knew on stream when he was playing against him. But then maybe he found out a little bit later. But he knows that this guy is a real com uh, competitor now. He knows that uh, he can't hold, pull any punches here. He has to go full bore. And he's sitting here at 370 APM. Look at that, 450 APM from Flash. Safe to assume that he's probably over his wrist injuries at this point, and that he's gonna be feeling at full form. He's taken a lot of time to recover that. He's a one and a half years for his military, military service, plus around two years uh, of just off time. Uh, since the crypto scandal. I don't know if he, if he played it all, just kind of casually or if he was playing like some custom matches with maybe some close friends and just not telling anybody about it i don't know but he is blazingly fast even after all of that time off this time he's going to be going for 
Um, a CC into factory. This is interesting. One rack CC into factory. Now, is this some sort of 111 here? Or on a retro? Interesting to see him going uh, for this build on this map specifically because this map, two racks, is pretty darn good. It's not a long distance to walk from here straight through down to here. It's actually so close that you need to have um, two sunken colonies like kind of ready. You need to have two creep colonies ready uh, before they move out of their natural. Otherwise, you're going to get caught off guard. There's the starport. And is this a armory? Okay, armory. We are going to go Valkyrie here. You can see the second gas hasn't been taken. It's probably not going to be a mech follow-up. We'll probably switch into bio, like build another two, uh, three barracks here in a little bit. But he's definitely going to be denying this, defending this with his Valkyrie play. All right. Starts the sunken. Yeah, you can see he started it. Even though we don't see anything in the natural, he starts a sunken because he knows that around five minutes is when a two racks will move out and you need the sunken started before the move out. Otherwise, you will just die. So, he moves in. He sees only two marines. There's a medic here as well. That's kind of funny that we have actually that medic. There's the two more racks. Is he going to go for a third as well? Looks like yes. Or is this a turret? Okay, turrets being added on. There's the Valkyrie. And here is the 2.5 hatchery play from Jadong. Jadong going to come across with a full clutch of mutas. So he hasn't been slowed down at all by a two racks, but he will be denied by the Valkyrie, I think. As a Valkyrie comes out here, you're really going to shut down this play. Three, four, no. Four, five, six. That's already great damage here. Seven, in fact. Seven SCVs have just been killed. Can he actually get the Valkyrie as well? Taking quite a lot of damage on these. Oh, just barely not able to get that Valkyrie. That is a bit rough. Really committed to trying to finish that off. He does save the Overlord, but... Damn, that's um, it's quite a lot of damage. It's the healthiest one. And... I mean, I don't think that this really did its job. The Valkyrie play did not really do its job here. In that, we still lost 7 SCVs. And we were supposed to be able to push away the Mutalus easily. Now we've got Scourge here mixed in. He's looking for a Valkyrie. He will get one. Really, really nice control there from Jadong. And just going to back away. He could actually just dive on top of this. Split the Mutas and dive on top of the Valkyrie now. He won't do so. As more Scourge are coming forward here. If he can trade for just two Scourge, that's a much better trade. Even just put one Scourge of worth of damage onto that. And then dive on it with the uh, Mutas would be fine. Looks like he is going to get that. Oh, great control by Jadong. Really, really good stuff by him. Sniping both the Valkyries so far. And now he can just run over these Marines. No questions asked. Absolutely wiping them out. And what is the follow-up here? We don't even have plus one going. No upgrades at all. And Jadong is just running over this. He takes, or he puts one hit onto this uh, Valkyrie. It looks like he's going to take it out, but all the Mutas will die. Yeah, okay. That Valkyrie just got three kills. Um, do we have Lurkers yet? No, no Lurkers. So he actually needs to, I think, build another set of Mutas. Well, there's not enough Marines, I guess. Yeah, not enough Marines yet. So maybe Sunkins and then Lurkers will actually save the day here. Probably going to send a few sunkins or a few lurkers down to the bottom left. Keep a few back at home here. And then natural to try and uh, morph into lurkers in time for an eventual move out that's going to come here. Now it's a large enough force that we can threaten. But a counter attack could be really, really devastating. So he's going to move out 
through the middle of the map, actually heading down towards possibly the bottom left. Triple Valkyrie now. Triple Valkyrie very good at clearing out mutas, so I want to be very careful with those. Oh, jeez. Pretty decent trade there. Not the worst. We almost got another Valkyrie, but it's like some good targeting by Flash is gonna say or is gonna save those Valkyries and he heads them all the way back home. They're not really that useful anymore, so he's gonna stop producing them. Instead, switching into a Vulture and a drop ship. He is gonna try and do a Vulture drop here after cleaning out the Overlords. That is absolutely a possibility. But Scourge are here. Maybe he will use the Valkyries to cover, bait the Scourge out, and then go in with the dropship. I think that might be the plan. All right, here we go. Yeah, this is a cute little task force here. Vultures and drop heading down into the bottom right. Is he going to be able to do anything with this? Because his force of Marines and Medics did nothing down here in the bottom left. He's going to threaten the front and attack into the main here. At the same time, a lot of Scourge are ready, but they're not in position. Lurkers, Lings are here. Quite a lot of Scourge are ready to, to try and take this, but he's actually going to pick up more and bring it into the main. Got to get in here in between the, the drop and the... Um, I try to get on top of that drop ship. He's not able to though. Lings are dumping on top of all this. The Scourge are gonna dive into these Valkyries and two of them do go down very quickly. Another drop of Marines here as the first one gets cleaned up, but Lurkers are everywhere. Uh, and Lings are gonna be helping out here as well. All right, really good splitting there from Flash. Trying to get the most value out of his units here as possible. Gonna target down one more Lurker. Looks like he will get that. But the Marines will be finished off now. This is a decent hold. A very decent hold overall from Jadong, who's sitting here at 37 total workers. And I think we're going to see a mech transition, guys. Look at that. Attack upgrade coming in here for mech. No plus one attack for Marines. Now, usually when you do this... Oh, did we just drop uh, Vultures into the main? Oh, wow. They don't have any kills yet. But this is a kind of a cute move here. Getting the vultures up inside and dropping a bunch of mines. Well, eventually an overlord's going to move over there and clear that. But maybe this buys him a little bit of time. Usually when you do this sort of mech transition, you're going to use the marines as kind of a stop gap. The marines are going to sit out in front of these bases and hold down the fort while you lift off all your barracks and transition. But... He's actually being forced to build more Marines right now because he lost all of his Marines diving into the main base uh, with the drop. He's just not going to have that uh, leeway here in this game. Mines are going to help to bridge the gap here. Putting mines out in front of both of these bases, but Jadong will just take his fourth happily here. Drone up like crazy. He's going to be going up to like 50, 60 drones maybe. Uh, really, really fast. So, this is starting to look kind of dangerous for Flash. We'll see how this mech transition goes. This is like a uh, start of remastered mech transition right here. This is really cool to see. He's just going to start plopping down factories and flying his barracks around everywhere. His engineering bait as well, though he kind of does need that. Don't want to let that die. Maybe he'll put it like, yeah, there. Someplace where it's unlikely to get sniped. Because he will need turrets eventually. We've got commsats coming up here. I heard a lot of scans going down. He's checking out what's going on. Nidus is added here for Jadong. Now he can slide his drones through that Nidus and over to this uh, fresh base in the bottom right. Here comes a drop. Dropship. Sensing that it's going to be spotted here by... Uh, the overlords and probably taken out by scourge he's gonna go back and load up and maybe fly around to down here in the bottom left okay another one actually coming in so he's potentially going for a double drop or two drops at the same time scourge gonna catch this good unload here killing quite a few drones doing some good damage right now 
And the vultures are just going to run up into the bottom left main. Kill even more drones. Dude, this is a lot of damage. Wow. This has been very successful. 5, 4, and 4 on these uh, vultures. And that secondary drop that I was talking about earlier lands here in the main and starts to kill off a lot of drones. This is some fantastic multitasking here. Ooh. Nice save. Just turning that into a lurker to avoid the mine damage. And, um... Meanwhile, Flash is actually taking top left. So, now we have to see a redrone here from Jadong. He's going for Chitinous Plating. Um, and getting into all of the upgrades for that ground army, but... This is going to be a massive mech switch with a lot of mines and a lot of tanks. You can see already three machine shops have been added on. And we're getting into a lot of gas as well. We're going to have four gas here shortly. And vessels will start to pump out like crazy as well. Uh, once you get into like this crazy up mech style. And you have this many uh, vessels and tanks. It becomes really, really tough to fight. With basically anything that the Zerg has. You kind of need queens. Even if you go like mass uh, muta. With that many vessels. If there's enough irradiates. It just kind of ruins your day. All of them are going to end up dying. Another drop down here in the bottom left. Dealing even more damage here. Lings are trying to clear this up. But they're not good enough. Uh, Lurker is present to help finish this off. More Lings are going to be sent down. But that is a rough... Uh, attack there coming in. Oh my goodness. Oh, the Lurker dies here before the uh, Lurker can burrow. So he manages to uh, kill that off and he can continue this push. This is so aggressive from Flash right now. Absolutely crazy that he's running right up to the natural. Most times when you see a mech player... Uh, you know, make this transition. They're really defensive. Tanks on high ground everywhere. And just baiting the Zerg into trading poorly against them. But here, Flash is like right in his face. Jadong is not being given a second of respite here. Another drop going to come in to the bottom left. He's not ready for this one either. Okay, he does have some links. And Scourge are going to come up from behind this. So, a uh, pretty good response here by Jadong. This one not going to get nearly as much damage. Maybe one kill. Not even a single drone kill. So, finally hanging on here. Really, really solidly. He has plus one armor on air. I'd love to see him continue those armor upgrades, though. He's going to have a lot of money here. And switching back into mutas in the late game can be very strong. Once the tank number gets too high. Tanks are moving through the middle of the map. We've got uh, Ultras with plus four armor, but no speed just yet. Meeting up with tanks here. Taking this fight. Can he actually run by this and get up into the top left? Prevent that base from going down well. Defiler's here with some Lings and a Lurker. That's going to stop the... Or it's going to shut down these tanks that are trying to move forward right now. Nice plague on three of these tanks as they retreat. There's nothing on the high ground right now. So Flash moving... As quickly as he can into position to get up on that high ground and hold this position. This is such a hard position to break. Once it's been established. Because these tanks can shell you as you're coming towards this bridge. If you're setting up right here. All the way through here they can start hitting you. So a really really good position there taken by Flash. And he's going to take another base immediately. Meanwhile Jadong trying to take a base and trying to put on the pressure right now. But he's struggling to do either. Lings and Ultras moving through the middle of the map. And Flash's macro is just kind of out of control. Well, we are pretty even on that supply now. But he has to still trade well with this. Ultras, if you just run them into mines. And Lings, if you run them into mines and vultures, are not going to trade very well. And eventually, you will be at a, a huge deficit. Especially with Flash on this many bases. You can see he's sending Lings out ahead of the, the Ultras here, but how is this stuff going to trade against massive amounts of tank and 
uh, Ling or Tank and Vulture, it's not going well, as you might expect. The tanks are tearing apart the Ultras, and the Lings are basically melting against these Vultures and tanks. Now, he did kill a few tanks. He kind of dropped the supply a little bit, but now the supply differential has grown here. Are we going to go for a drop soon? We actually probably could use some uh, Ultras being loaded up into drops and just drop on top of this high ground. Do we have drop capability? Uh, I think maybe not. That would be a major oversight here for Jadong. You need to go drops if you want to take uh, a fight, good fights, clean fights against mech. Uh, when you're going ultra. But Flash is just pushing hard, man. He's just coming across this map right now. He's already done plus two. He's about to be three, two here. We've got five armor for these ultras, but the trades are going to get worse and worse as time goes on. This is the best possible moment for trades. Queens are coming in right now, but you know what I see? I see only two Goliaths in this army. And I imagine that uh, a Mutalist transition would do very nicely right about now. He doesn't have that much gas. He's actually spent it all into Ultras. That's 800 gas that just went into Ultras. And a whole bunch of gas that went into Queens just now. But if he made a bunch of Mutas, tell me he wouldn't wipe out this army right now. Ultras. Getting on top of some of these tanks, but great job just backing up outside of range of this Dark Swarm. Targeting down the Ultras and Defilers. Continuing to push forward right now. Flash is moving in on this base down here uh, at the bottom center. And I just don't see a lot of moves right now for Jadong. Like he's not, you know, doing drops. He's not like trying to hit back at flash at all there's kind of an open main base over here which could be very droppable instead he's just trying to live right now he's just trying to hang on a lot of mines over here that actually might end up connecting with a bunch of these ultras i'm trying to keep my eye on that because that's four mines and we've got three ultras which is kind of the bulk of the force right now for flash he needs to bring these to bear in a real significant way. There's only four Marines here. There's no Goliaths now. Ooh, the mines are going to connect really big there. Great mine connections. And now, what can we even do? Can we break down this ramp? The Vultures are blocking everything up. And laying down really significant mines. They're just going to deal and soften up huge amounts of damage on these Ultras. Ultra's just not even able to get down this ramp, and the uh, tank number has swole, uh, has grown and swollen so mightily here. There's the Queens now finally coming out to cast their Broodlings. He's got quite a few here. How many did he cast? He casted seven. So does he have an army to follow this up? This is the problem. Another ten over here. Is that enough to kill all these tanks? I think it might be. Oh, oh no, he made a mistake. He cast like four broodlings on one tank. Wait, what the hell? Oh my goodness, a big mistake there. I mean, that was enough That was enough broodlings to kill all of these. Can't even do that anymore. Can he actually clear this? He's got more energy on these. But more tanks are coming down here to reinforce. Just an endless supply train of tanks coming across the map here. From Flash, he's got so many factories in uh, multiple locations, multiple rally points coming out and just filtering across the map. Look at his money right now. 71 workers and uh, three bases because the t main and natural are actually mined out, but he is just spending every dime like he never took a break at all, man. This is some uh, beautiful flowing macro for the mech player. And Jadong is just about down and out, man. He's still got 170 supply. So it's hard for me to, to call it right here. But we are just like right up in the face of Jadong killing his, uh, for his, his fifth base right now. Great plague there on the low ground. Do we have any energy? We're so close to energy. But we're also so close to actually killing this base. The base is just about dead here. No drops and no anti-air. Where are the mutas? He's building three more ultras. 
If we just had a Muta or two, there's no Goliath. What is happening right now? Jadong is just with blinders on making constant ultralisk and ling and he just filters into flash queens were not properly utilized there i feel some of the broodlings all fired onto one tank and we just didn't identify the uh opportunity to transition here just make like 10 mutas rather than five ultras and uh, like just think about it think about how much work five ultras can do against this army and then think about how much 10 mutas could do look at all the low hp tanks in this army how quickly they would end up dying these ones especially as soon as you wipe out all those tanks you can start to overwhelm with ultralisk and ling but you have to be willing to do that transition otherwise the Terran player never having to build Goliaths can just mass up an insane amount of tanks. You can see six tanks in production, one Goliath. He doesn't even have a Goliath right now because he's got one. Let's look at the map. How many Goliaths does he have? Looks like he was breaking in over there at the same time. One Goliath, guys. He has one Goliath. He's got six Marines over here. And that is the entirety of his anti-air. A turret over there. And very light on turrets this game. Flash was able to get away with so much. Wow, look at that. I hope that Jadon can put something together here. But Flash just pounding his way through. Showing us a brilliant mech transition straight out of the launch of Remastered. Really awesome to see, guys. We're going to hop into game number three. Still plenty to go. All right, now I heard that this was an extra special game. Jinjin was telling me to make sure that I casted this one. We've got Flash over here on Apocalypse. And I'm going to be paying very close attention to what he does in this game. It was an interesting transition he did last game into Mech. There were a few things that um, were punishable, though, for sure. Like... When he didn't have any Marines left after all those drops, it was definitely time to take map control uh, as a Zerg player. But it just felt like Flash was always the aggressor. He was always on top of whatever Jadong was doing, despite uh, things going pretty well for Jadong in the early game, really. Uh, he did a fantastic job with the Mutas. He got seven SCV kills. And it slowed him down quite substantially. But Flash, I mean, the drop play was crazy. It just never ended. Um, and it just kept getting, like, harder and harder, actually. Like, the first drops with the Marines were not that great. But then it was uh, Vultures, and they didn't do very well. But then they started doing well and killing a lot of workers. And just taxing and taxing the multitasking of Jadon. I definitely don't blame him for... You know, not uh, uh, fully switching into Mutalist. They're getting kind of uh, stuck up. Or not stuck up. Um, locked in is probably a better way to say that. Uh, because, you know, when things are going so crazy, when a game is just getting so wild, it is very hard to, to step back and uh, think clearly when it's just so much chaos going on all the time. So... You know, he tried it. He tried to do the Ultralisk, just straight up Ultra Ling to overwhelm the Terran mech. But yeah, just it's it's not very cost efficient. It's actually very cost inefficient. And when Flash has so many bases, it's never going to end up working. Unfortunate stuff there. But hopefully, we can see some more uh, great play here out of Jadong. Maybe he will. Uh, react a little bit differently in the future because I'm sure that we're not done with mech here. In fact, I'm pretty sure this is a mech game, uh, which is why Jinjin really wanted me to see this one. Uh, one thing that has been a little bit lacking in recent uh, high level play is actually mech versus Zerg. We don't really see it too much anymore, it's mostly bio. And rarely transitioning into um, 
rarely transitioning over into mech even after the bio but hardly ever going into just straight up bio it almost never happens these days now some marines are going to be produced here a cc gets thrown down and we're going to go ahead and start a second barracks so actually maybe not mech this game i i honestly thought it was but maybe it's a different game on apocalypse um or maybe this transitions into mech a little bit later i'll have to wait and see that second racks Gonna give him some oomph here with this army. Four Marines going up against six Lings. Not a great fight for the Marines, so they are gonna back off. All right, Ling's gonna run right on top of this. This is a great move by Jadong, actually. He doesn't allow the Marines to really micro against him by running up into the back line and just attacking the ones at the back immediately. You saw that Flash tried to pull away the Marine at the front, but it didn't really do anything for him, and now uh, Jadong's cleaned up everything, and we're forcing a bunker here back at home. These Marines standing by with their shoddies, or their uh, machine guns here, their gauze rifles. Not getting in the bunker in time to defend against this Ling, which will make its way into the main. But they should be able to hold on against these uh, incoming Lings here. No SCV kill in the main, but this SCV will go down. And yeah, we're going to get into like some sort of two racks play, but it's not going to be nearly as strong here. The academy is pretty late. And we're just putting out as many Marines as possible. As you can see, two racks, it's five minutes. This is when you're supposed to be moving out. But the academy is not done. So this is like a, a, a two racks with... Uh, a bit of early pressure into a later timing engineering bay coming up at a normal time here and marines are actually moving into the main curiously he's definitely not going to try and pressure it seems and jadong's going to get away with making only six lings in the early game he made four more but you know th what, what is that uh five pairs and no sunkins. I mean, you're feeling pretty good as a Zerg player after making that small of a commitment to uh, defenses. So he's going to be able to pop seven mutas here immediately and get to this harassment right around six minutes. Turrets are coming up back at home. No transition just yet. No, uh, um factory on the way here but getting the turrets that he needs to just hold on for now he's in a bit of an awkward position after losing his early marines but doing a good job blocking out the meta so far but we're reaching that seven count and this is where the meta harassment gets scary there's eight and nine and seven is where you can one shot scvs and that's when the Amitas will typically dive in and start to go for kills. Getting one turret here, but almost losing two different Mutas. Two of them are on 6 and 10 HP. Uh, so it might be prudent to pull these out and swap them in for some healthier ones. Hydralis then on the way here. Queen's Nest as well. So only about nine Mutas uh, having been produced. He is going to start that tech switch. Factory starts as well now. Scans are coming down to reveal the location of the third base over here at the center left. It's a relatively strong base to take. But it only nets you one gas and the entrance is pretty wide open. It's not that easy to defend with lurker. It's not like you can just easily defend with just two lurkers. You need like two or three lurkers plus a couple of sunkins. To make that defense a handy defense. Now, coming in. Finally going to go to work on some of these SCVs. Three at the periphery of the base. Four. Five. But we saw even more damage last game. And it wasn't able to roll over uh, Flash. And give him... or uh, and, and give Jadong a win. And it appears we're going for the tank push again. Interesting. So just like game one... 
Another tank push here. Is he going to be able to find an opening in Jadon's defense? Is similar to the one he found in that first game. Muta's coming in and trading out a little bit. He loses one Muta for about three, four Marines. Not bad. Science facility. Starport's done. SCV's not mining. A little bit of a, uh, unoptimized play here from Flash here and there, but... For the most part, he is hitting this build correctly, and he will be out on the map well in advance of any sort of uh, Defiler play. How many tanks is he going to have, though? Potentially two to three is kind of what you're looking for, what you'd like to have. Two to three with Siege Mode before Consume is done at their base. You want to have it here hitting everything before Consume is done. Um... How how long before consume is done? Oh my gosh, he snipes a tank. That is huge, huge, huge value. And how long the before the uh, consume is done? Really, it will uh, mean the difference here between a win and a loss. Um, or a win, uh, just an instant win, and you know the the game continuing on, but. With that first tank being taken out, it's unlikely we're going to be able to get over here with, you know, two, three tanks before Consume is done. And look at that. Consume has started, and we haven't even moved out with one tank yet. We've got one with a second on the way. And he's going to just start moving out now. So this is cutting it close. And it's unlikely he'll be able to get over here and deal any damage with this. Oh, the science whistle gets picked off. That's huge. Oh, that's so big. Jadon, great move there. Able to get that first science vessel with just a pair of Scourge. I did not expect to see that happen. Um, and we barely even caught the tail end of it, but really impressive stuff there from Jadon. Is he going to cancel? No. Still going to build a tank here, but this is almost doomed to fail. We've got two tanks. We have the Nidus. It's almost done. That's the last piece of the puzzle here that needs to be put together for this defense to hold the filer here as consume ready as does this one and right as the marines and tanks arrive this attack has already failed really really rough here well transitioning moving over to the center left I mean, it's not looking any better. Ooh, the science vessel going to get caught as well. Flash, really? Well, I understood what Ru I understand what Rush was saying now. He was doubting that this was indeed Flash. But then, as he you know watched more, he was able to to confirm that. But I mean, this is this is rough, guys. Flash is in such a bad position. How is he going to bring this one back? Is he going to be able to bring this one back? It's it's rough right now. While well, we're going into Plague Defiler, a uh, Hydra play. Oh, actually, it's going to go into Ultra. Well, that's interesting. Was not expecting the Ultra play here. I'm going to go double uh, upgrades, potentially. Diving in right now against dark swarm he thought maybe he had a moment maybe uh jadong was gonna mess that one up and um not have the dark swarm ready in time but he absolutely did kind of a good position here to just sit on the high ground but mutas are gonna come forward and start to pick that off nice irradiate there right as the mutas were fully committing but all the tanks do end up going down that is tough all the tanks are gone. You can't hit uh, the gas from this position. It looks like you almost could, but just barely can't. Plague there. Plague here as well. Everything looking very, very good for Jadong as he starts to push forward. He's basically dismantled uh, the strategy here from Flash. And he's starting to extend this lead almost out of the 
uh, ballpark of where we would imagine, uh, you know, Terrence could come back from. Moving down here. And throwing out a Radiates to deal with this one pesky Defiler coming forward, but it does get the Plague off before its death, and that was an amazing Plague as well. Getting one of the vessels and a whole bunch of Marines. Now it's just pure Marine over here. No medics in this army. There's one medic over here. I'm gonna pull these things together. Medics don't have any energy either. They're actually busy healing each other. Which is not a good look. And Jadong is looking for another base right now. Another plague comes out. He will break these lurkers. Lurkers actually have to run back right now because the Dark Storm just wasn't quite there. Ready for another plague here. Will he just cast it on the vessels? No, because Scourge are coming up. And with the Scourge connecting and the Defilers escaping through the Nidus. Things are looking worse and worse for Flash right now. Battlecruisers are on the way, but... Oh, wow. Okay, nine Ultras are about to pop. So, Battlecruisers are actually going to help quite a bit. Um, if it was the standard Plague Defiler play, then Battlecruisers would be really, really bad. But since it's that Ultralisk tech... Flash knows that these Battlecruisers are going to help a lot. Another vessel goes down. Dude... The vessels are getting sniped like crazy right now. And now it's actually Flash's turn to, to underwhelmingly perform here. Good split though. Gunning down a bunch of these lurkers. Gets the irradiate there as well. Some lings making their way all the way around are going to meet up with a few marines here in the top right. Little powwow session there. No plus three on the way. That's scary. We haven't started that plus three yet here for Flash. And uh, I'm sure we've already got plus two. Yeah, and plus three should be coming soon. That is so many Ultras. Holy. Yikes, that is so many Ultras. He throws down one Irradiate. He was looking for the Defiler, but not able to find it. I mean, that's just too many Ultras, guys. I don't know what to say. That's 10, 12 Ultras here. And as soon as um, Ultra Speed is done, yeah, it's done now. What are you about to do in this game? I mean, it's going to be really, really rough. Ultras heading up to the top left, clearing out some stray Marines. Battlecruiser is going to come in here, but Plague is already active. Muta's going to be brought up to tank so that the Scourge can connect. Another Plague going to be thrown down here. Just to soften him up before this fight. Muta's going to dive now and the Scourge will connect. Picking that off very nicely. Ultras just all banked up here. Looks like we are going to take a few Irradiates, but... Oh, Scourge are actually going to get on top of this in time. Oh, no, just barely not. Uh, Irradiates do get off, but that's just two Irradiates. And trading, you know, a, a Defiler and a bit of health on an Ultra for a, a couple of Vessels is pretty rough. The Marines are going to back off, but oh my god, this is way too many Ultras. That Marine number, I don't care if you're Flash... Or if you're just a random ladder Terran, Flash would not have won there. And he taps out. GG. Gets completely surrounded. And man. Going back and forth here. Jadong not looking uh, too hot in that last game. And now Flash looking a little off kilter here. Let's see if we can get a, a great game where both players are looking their best. Let's jump into the next one and find out. We keep it going here. Jadong here in the top left hand corner. Flash in the bottom left. That white Terran skin looking pretty good. Pretty flashy here. For the Emperor himself. or We don't call him the Emperor, do we? We just call him God. The Emperor is Boxer. 
would be cool to have Boxer back in the scene. I think he's dipped his toe in a couple of times. Same thing with 4GG. Same thing with Fantasy. But it is quite the commitment to really come back and be a competitor. Uh, and, you know, play in the ASL and, and do all the things. Like, you have to spend so much of your time to reach that level. Even if you are a Fantasy. Even if you are a Flash. It is a massive time commitment. And there are so many things to do in this life. Uh, one of them being actually uh, coaching League of Legends teams, which is, is where Fantasy gets his uh, kicks these days. Not my cup of tea, but hey, each their own. We've got a one Rax build here. Looks like one Rax fast expand, most likely. Coming out of uh, Flash once again. We'll see if he takes the gas. Is he going to take it? Uh, looks like not. Scouting in the incorrect direction here, unfortunately. And a... Uh, 12 hatch, 11 pool, 10 gas for Jadong. This is probably going to be a 2 hatch with a 3rd hatch at another natural or main base. Or maybe at this base here at 12. Drone going to scout bottom left. Figure out what his opponent is up to here in the early game. And he won't see anything out of the ordinary just yet. As the pool finishes up here, he's going to go to... Uh, oh, just 13. He's actually going to save. No, he does go to 14. So, 14 of 14. Or 14 of 17, excuse me. And uh, no larva saved here for extra lings. Uh, you do this only when you're confident that you're not going to be uh, rushed eight racks or anything like that and he did get the scout on there so he will build those extra drones just maximize economy early game not too much that flash can really do about that a second racks okay here we go gas and a second racks academy flash is going all in no two ways about it no other way to put it here he is going to hit hard. And he's trying to hide this. Trying to make it look like he's going for an expansion. By just having the Marines out in the front. He knows that the Overlord went to the top right. And the second Overlord's not going to get here in time to spot this. So he has gamed this out really, really well. He knows exactly the information that his opponent has. And he knows exactly the time that his opponent is going to look for him to move out. So while he's here chasing the SCV, he knows that he's not in front of his base waiting for that move forward. He is building a lot of lings though. This is interesting. Four more sets of lings are being built right here. It feels like Jadong is preparing to dominate a two racks move out like a uh, two racks after FE move out. But he sees the medics. Okay, this is big. He sees the medics here. He's gonna jump on top of this right before Stim is done. There's no Stim. Everything gonna die here. Absolutely crushed. Absolutely crushed. Did Jadon know? Did he know that this was two racks? He felt it out. He, he sensed it. Because this is actually a bit earlier than five minutes. When he had all these lings out. And he just worked that build. Absolutely worked it. Wow. Incredible. It's like almost like map hack level here from Jadong. To just build that many lings. Um, pre five minutes. Like we're way before the five minute mark. To where we're going to see that move out. Coming here from Flash. Uh, if he was just going for a standard. Like one racks FE into two racks uh Stim push. He had his spire on the way. He had just the bare minimum number of drones. 
and the Ling's completely overwhelming here. Wow, that's a super quick game. That's not what I was hoping for, but it's really impressive to see Jadong absolutely knowing this build and countering it perfectly. The timing though, guys, the, t the, the pure timing of that with uh, the stim being not done just as that was coming in, also not bringing the fire bats. Maybe if Flash had waited for the fire bats, and the stim upgrade, he could have fought this and killed all of these links and actually, uh, you know, beaten this uh, pretty handily, in fact, if the, the fire bats are there and getting good shots and not getting, you know, completely surrounded and killed immediately um, without stim. But it is what it is. Jadong just handles that, crushes it. And he basically rolled him up into a ball and just threw him in the trash bin and flash. What's he going to come out with next? Let's find out. All right, well, after a game goes that poorly, I'm sure that Flash here is back for blood. We've got Jadong spawning in the bottom right. Flash here on Apocalypse. Maybe this is the Apocalypse game that uh, I was mentioning earlier that Jinjin was telling me was so great. Let's find out. I'm open to it. I'm happy to, to see great games. Anytime, any place. Let's see it, Flash. I want to see it, something special here. I want to see a new build, a new idea. That's what Flash is really known for. What really makes his gameplay special is his optimizations and his real deep understanding of the game. And pretty much every time we've seen him. You know, dip off the ladder and come back. He's always come back with some fresh ideas. He's always come back with some new um, modes of playing. And even sh just shaking up the meta. Shaking up our understanding of how specific matchups work. And that's really what is so impressive about him. Uh, at the deepest level. He just understands the game better than basically anyone. That's what's necessary, really, to to be able to play, you know, random in the ASL. You really have to have that deep level of, of just knowing and understanding. And oh my goodness, he's going to go 14cc. 14cc here. The ball's on this man. This is a huge throwback to the good old days. The flash, like early career he was trying to make the 14 cc work in all kinds of pro matches and people thought he was crazy but then he showed how powerful it could be and really started to dominate he just knew he knew that it was going to be good he knew that it was strong and he kept playing with it until he found out a way to make it work and here it's going to work miracles against Jadong because Jadong, he's gone for the same build once again. I believe it was the 12, 11, 10 hatch pool gas. And I mean, I think this is going to be strong, man. I think we're just going to have a pretty big advantage going forward here because Flash is not going to take any harassment. He doesn't need to pull SCVs. He has a perfect wall. He's going to get right to mining here. Look at how nicely this all lines up here. He only has to transfer two SCVs from the main. Because he's got the one that just made the barracks. He's got the one that made the second supply depot. And the one that made the um, CC. And so he transfers two workers and he's got... Uh, one for every patch, except for this one. He's actually got two on this patch. Okay, he fixes it. Look at that. Just beautiful. Remarkable stuff from Flash. And his position in this game is insane. Oh my god, he's going into a factory here. So it is going to be, I, I, I think, a mech play. 
we have uh, get to see if he's gonna throw down, you know, star ports and stuff, but two factory, yeah, mech is coming. Mech is coming here, guys. 14 CC into mech. This is wild. He is indeed back for blood. Flash is prepped, well prepped here for this match. He's felt out his opponent and he knows that Jadong likes to go for these early uh, hatch builds. And rather than try to punish with an eight racks, he punishes in the exact opposite direction. He says, well, 14 CC will be fantastic here. And we heard what... Uh, Rush was saying is that you can't really scout the second gas. You actually could scout the second gas. You can go around here and scout the second gas, no problem. I think that's what he was saying earlier, right? Um, in the uh, translation from Jinjin, Rush was saying that it's very strong when you when the opponent can't scout the second gas, but that's ab absolutely doable. I just don't think that Jadong's actually going to do it. And we've got. Triple Factory, Engineering Bay, Armory. Eight mutas are on the way. Charon Boosters is coming here. And three Goliaths just hit the field. Two turrets here in the natural. One in the main thus far. He's going to try to completely deny these mutalists. Not allow them to get any damage. And with six Goliaths, that's not an... Uh, an impossible task. I think he should be able to make that happen. I guess the SCV over here just got picked off. And let me change the colors here. Oh, that's red. Red Terran, no good. Brown is a little bit strange on this map. It's hard to see uh, on the mini map, but we'll go with that for now. I'm going to go ahead and start to snipe. Some of these SCVs, uh, three, four, five, six, seven, ooh, eight. I mean, uh, eight? And we haven't even lost a Muta yet. Now, this is pretty fantastic from Jadong. Eight kills and no Muta loss. Um, Yeah, really, really good stuff. And he could come along here, come over here and start to snipe these down because this is four... Five factories here. Five factory right, uh, Goliath bush. It's very scary. Burrow is on the way. Flyer of Carapace is on the way. Sunken colonies are coming. Lings are being made, but they do not have speed. They'll just be there to tank. Third base is likely to go down here. Very difficult to hold on to that. He traded out a bunch of SCVs, but I mean, now this base is kind of forfeit here. In the top right. These Goliaths are going to make that. Uh, make short work of this. And it takes a little bit of time. For a Goliath to kill a hatchery. But uh, I think he's going to make that happen. Hmm. More Goliaths are coming out right now. Lings are going to be helping to tank. He's backing away from the Lings. And uh, targeting down the Mutas here. Mutas being targeted. They are getting a little bit low. We've still got 11 left. More are out. They're not being added onto this force. There's only... Six Goliaths left, seven now, with a couple of Marines to kind of help out. And this is still a lot of Mutas, and that next Carapace upgrade is, or the first Carapace upgrade is about to finish. Coming into the back, he's actually going to pick off some of the reinforcements. This is a fantastic move from Jadong. Picking off reinforcements right now is insanely good. He gets two, might get a third. Nope, just backing away now. More are here. So more targets for Jadong right now. Diving on top of these Goliaths. Really, really good moves here from Jadong. He picks that off, but it's time to actually head back home and defend the third base. He's going to start to leave. Has more Lings and Mutas. Losing drones right now, though. Not great here for Jadong. He needs to bring everything together right now and overwhelm this. He's got a little bit of time because it, it is uh, not that good. Like, Goliaths are not great against hatcheries, but it looks like he gets it. No problem. He picks off the hatch. And the Mutas are going to dive on top of this. I think everything will be cleared. 
Yeah, indeed. Everything gonna get cleared up here. Jadon can go back to mining now. On his uh, third gas. But the mining is not gonna be efficient. There's Burrow again. Did he, like, upgrade and cancel it and then upgrade it again? I think so. Or maybe it was upgrading on this hatchery. I don't know. Seems unlikely. Seems a little bit funny. That's a lot of mutas. Moving over here towards the natural. What have we got for the follow-up? Just pure goliath production. Pure, pure goliath production. One armor is done. Plus one attack is going to finish up soon. And I think we're just going to see him go again. Ooh. It's a lot of damage from all those Karen boosted missiles. Ling's here on the high ground. Gonna help to fight as the Goliaths come up this ramp. But no, just gonna back off. Still no Ling speed, hilariously. Losing an Overlord here. Will supply block Jadong for now. He has seven Hydras on the way. This supply block hurts. It really does hurt. We actually need more Hydras right now. Because this attack is coming. It's coming very soon. Trying to pick off a Goliath or two at the periphery. Could potentially, you know, catch these Goliaths that are rallying out right now. There you go. He will get one. <clears throat> Just going to get in between the rally point. Um, and his base right now. But Flash doing a good job, like, rotating back towards this, this area. Making sure that he can... Uh, prevent this from cutting off his rallies and you know what this is actually buying a lot of time we have enough time now to maybe get uh groove spines yeah the the hydralis range might finish and as long as hydralis range finishes i think we can take a reasonable trade there's three sunken okay this is pretty good i like what jadong is working with right now and he's gonna catch four goliaths out in the middle this is very very good stuff from him He's going to force the turnaround one more time. But his mutilist number has now dwindled to the point where I don't think that Flash even needs to turn around anymore. The rallies will just kill these mutas by themselves. So, he needs to make it work. Right now, oh, Groove Spine is so close. It's so close, Jadong. He needs just to buy a little bit more time. Just a tiny bit more time. And it seems like Flash is actually going to give it to him. He's just going to let him uh, sit here and uh, be okay with it, I guess. Well, he's building tanks. Okay. He's just going to sit here on high ground until he gets tanks over here. Now that there's no mutas to harass his rallies, he can just wait until tanks arrive. And Jadong is like gearing up for this attack that he thinks is coming right now. But is actually just going to get like a very... Uh, entrenched position here on the high ground he can start hitting from the high ground here onto some of these buildings the sunken colonies and stuff how are you ever going to push up this ramp with just pure hydra it's going to be absolutely devastating but he needs to do it now before the tanks are in high enough numbers to where it's even worse like this is just going to get worse like right now would be a very good time to actually fight this um Flash has... He's even bringing out SCVs to repair the Goliaths. That's how good Flash is, man. Look at this guy. Repairing up these SCVs right now is kind of crazy. I think Jadong just... He needs to go, man. <clears throat> if the second and third tank set up... Yeah, the second and third tank are going to set up. And now it's really bad. <laughs> oh, it's very scary. Here we go. Tanks are going to start to shell away at the sunken colonies. Oh, some queens are joining the fight, but they are way too late. We just, we don't have energy, man. He's going to have to take this fight with the Goliaths here on the low ground. Tanks are shelling away at this. Um, sometimes it can be good to just target the mutas onto the tanks and hope that some of them go down. But this is not looking too, too bad. However, uh, how many more Hydras are we going to have popping out here uh, against how many tanks are going to show up? Because one tank still remains. Another one arrives, and another one. So, I mean, Hydras are going to be popping out seven at a time. But with three tanks here at the front and a few Goliaths rallying in, I don't know if we're going to be able to trade well here. Hydras are just going to pop as they pop out. 
We do have that queen energy almost there. It's almost there, but GG is called. 50 more seconds was necessary. So he cannot wait that long and he will just have to tap out. GG, wow, what an interesting play from Flash. Really, really cool. Like, five factory Goliath is this kind of robust, but also sort of flimsy composition where you have like these two timings. It's plus one armor and plus one attack. Uh, you can hit on either of them or when both of them are done. Um, but then once those two attacks have been held, you're basically in a limbo where you don't have your science facility, so you can't upgrade plus two. Uh, it's going to be really, really slow. You've been building up to this massive Goliath force, and when you finally throw it all in, if it all dies, you kind of just tap out like you're in a really bad spot but here on apocalypse i understand why he went for this build now on apocalypse because he's able to contain the zerg player here from the high ground and then rally tanks across the map and slow push in it's a devastating play i'm so glad i got to see this from flash this is going to absolutely ruin me on ladder when people start to pick up on it because I'm already having a hard time against Mech, but this is brutal. Really, really cool to see, though. Let's jump into our next game. Here we are in game number six now. It's going to be on Troy with Flash spawning in the bottom left. Jadong in the bottom right. And if you guys have enjoyed this series so much, make sure to like and subscribe to the channel. Put out videos like this every single day. There's plenty more Flash replays. Uh, that I haven't casted yet and will be coming out soon. Uh, and I'm sure there'll be plenty more Flash replays in the future. Uh, this is just, like, as I said, kind of day one here of everyone finding out that Flash is back. So there's going to be plenty, plenty more where that came from. And uh, I just also want to mention, like I said, laddering. I started a new challenge for myself uh, on ladder i'm about 1900 uh zerg on ladder right now and i really want to reach a's so i'm doing 10 games a day until a where i go on my stream and i play 10 games every single day anyway guys if you want to check it out uh twitch.tv slash sc come by and say hi and uh watch the ladder struggle unfold it's pretty gruesome at times unfortunately um you know how it is another 12 hatch here for jadong and look at this barracks out in the front what is flash gonna pull out here this is one of the things that i kind of missed from the days of flash being in the asl and and being really really prolific is whenever a new map comes out everybody looks at this man and goes huh well what's flash gonna do on this map because <laughs> he always comes up with the best possible uh, Terran responses. Like, we've had seasons of ASL where the uh, Africa TV organizers uh, crafted map pools specifically designed to make it impossible for Flash to win <laughs> in ASL, and he still managed to make it happen. So, you know, this guy, he is so good at creating new builds and fashioning new styles uh, to adapt to the changing builds or changing uh, metagame based on the maps. And uh, that's what I really miss. It's just, huh, Troy is a really interesting map. I wonder what Flash would have done on this map. Well, here, we're, here we are. We're going to see what he thinks is the right way to play here. He's gotten in, he's seen that there's no links coming, so he won't even build a marine. He's just gonna go right into command center and second Rex. And he's gonna hit a really nice crisp timing here with his two Rax play, um, no doubt. Uh, unless he wants to go for a, um, I think if he wanted to go engineering bay, he would've gone engineering bay instead of second Rax right away, right? Well, there's the gas, and we should see Armory here, or not Armory, Academy here in a moment. 
still checking around, still seeing that no links have been made, so he's going to be feeling comfortable here, just sitting back at home with hardly any defenses whatsoever. Just two Marines finally popping out here and giving himself at least the basic, the very most basic level of security. Two SCVs coming in here. So the one SCV going to distract at the front. Second SCV going to just head on into the main and confirm the Spire. Some great uh, scouting here from Flash. And he might get the Ling. No, not going to get the Ling here with the three Marines. But nice attempt anyway. Jadong here. Grabs that Spire. And ring around the Rosie from Flash. Let's just see how quick he is keeping that SCV moving around and around the spire. He's not using the minimap clearly to, to make that happen. So uh, his vision is just flicking back and forth between these uh, the enemy base and his own. But with speed being done, of course, that SCV will fall. And now it's time for Jadon to come across the map. Can he actually do something with these lings that he's produced? He's got like, what, six lings? Is he going to make any more? Um, we have the, the move out timing here for Flash. He's making two fire bats to go along with this. Or are they just going to stay in the natural and just hope that he, he can hold off, um, any lings that might be coming? Two sunkins being made. They're a little bit slow, though. You know what? He's busy killing the assimilator over here in the top right. Jadong maybe miscalculating a bit. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Guys... Um, Lings, hello? Duncan Colony gonna go down here. Oh, man. Um, well. This is a bit anticlimactic. There goes Jadong. I was looking to see a really great game here, but uh, unfortunately, Troy disappoints. We've got just a regular two racks ends up winning the game here, and... Uh, that was all due to just the links not being there. If the links were here, you could buy time. You can't fully commit onto this high ground with the links kind of dogging the Marines. But he was more so uh, convinced that Flash was actually going to head over to the top right, I guess. He thought he was going to, to go and shut down that, that base in the top right. So he really wanted to get uh, through with killing the assimilators first. Before moving down here. So that... One tiny mistake costs Jadong this game, and this is uh, this is just Terran versus Zerg, guys. This is how quickly you can die, and uh, it, it really tickles me when people, uh, Protoss players, uh, complain about how you can die to a Hydralis bust, and how easy it is to just die. To a, a Hydralis bust and how easy it is for a Zerg player to transition out of a Hydralis bust into a normal game. This is what we deal with in Terran vs. Zerg. Every single game. Or almost every single game with the uh, two racks play. You can uh, just instantly die. It's very hard to know that it, it's coming or not. It's usually coming so you, you usually just know that it's going to be there and, and prepare for it anyway. Um, but... This is not all in at all, and, and it, it can't just kill you. So, that's what we saw there. An instant kill here with the two racks play, and we're going to jump into our final game, because I really hope that it's better than that one. That one is a little bit rough. Okay, our final game here with Jadong versus Flash. I hope you guys have enjoyed the seven-game series. Some of the games were a little disappointing. Um, not, like, just a highlight reel. And maybe you guys are used to. Uh, but I wanted to give the full context of what the series was like with these two players. Uh, banging it out on the 17th of June of 2024. Uh, all the games. So you have the full context of what's happening uh, between these two. And what's what's gone down on the ladder this week. And I honestly wanted to see them all myself as well. So I'm glad you guys have... Uh, joined me here today you guys have been here for uh, a little piece of history i guess with flash coming back to the ladder and running into jadong here 
It is, like I said, a bit poetic of a meeting. Seven games, kind of like an ASL, like a, a seven game series, right? I don't know exactly what the score is at this point. I haven't really been keeping track. Um, <clears throat> but it would be insane to, to, you know, have a real a seven game series. Like imagine another, like an ultimate battle or something between these two it would be so, so amazing. I'm actually really excited uh, to see if Flash will play in KCM again. Uh, KCM said some things when Flash <laughs> when Flash quit, uh, or when Flash had the controversy. Um, he he did say some things, so maybe Flash not going to be too keen to to come back. Maybe you know KCM going to be you know a little bit bashful about that. Maybe he doesn't want to invite Flash back. I'm not sure. Um, based just just because of what he said i i don't know i hope that they all work it out and then we can get flash into a kcm sometime soon um it, it just it's not the same without him just starcraft's not the same without him man we want to see him back it, it was fun for a couple of seasons to to just have everyone else shine and have their own uh you know time in the spotlights especially soul key who has really done amazingly well uh, in this past couple of years, but uh, we would love to see Flash come back. And hey, again here with the 14 CC, um, we letting them get away with it twice on Apocalypse. I think so. The uh, drone here trying to do as much damage as he can. He almost gets an SCV. And yeah, it's just the same build, exact same build, same timings and everything. I guess the CC is a little bit slower this time. See, he's he. This is supposed to all time out. He's letting the SCVs kind of wait here because all of the SCVs will get back to mining. Let's see if he transfers exactly two again. No, no transfer this time. That's interesting. A little bit different but pretty much the same. Same, same, but different. Two Marines here. Back to factory. Oh my God, again with the factories. Is it the exact same build or is he gonna mix it up a little bit? I love to see it, guys. Now, this might be the up mech game. This might be up mech here, guys. Supply Depot, second gas, of course, of course, Overlord did manage to go the long way around. It's not going to get caught by Marines. This is making a mad dash here. This is what a mad dash looks like for an Overlord. This is, this is risky territory here. If the Marines come down and catch that, he would be done for. But since it's a uh, mech and there's hardly any Marines, um, he is going to be okay. Oh, pull the marine. Okay, never mind. It's fine. SCV is just chilling in the main, making sure that not too many lings are being made here. Base over here. So now this might be a little different, right? That strategy that we used last time, not going to work against what uh, Jadong did this game. <gasps> Double armory? What? Oh my god. Triple factory, double armory. What am I seeing? There's the uh, engineering bay. But this is madness right now. We've got one vulture here. He's not even going to bother to scout with that or try to put on pressure. And we don't even have a sunken colony. So, <laughs> I mean... Pretty crazy, this game so far. Really not looking like a normal mech game at all. Vulture not moving out even a little bit, but he can't afford even one vult extra vulture here. He just popped that one to the front, and he is all Goliaths right now. He's keeping the gas going, and we should, I guess, see double armory here pretty soon. It's a little bit funny that he hasn't started the upgrades. Maybe the build hasn't been completely worked out yet. 
Mutas are going to come into the front and start to kill the Vulture. The Vulture is a great target here. Oh, that's not Ling Tight? Oh my god. That is not Ling Tight. Um, <laughs> so Ling's just run over that. How is that possibly not Ling Tight? That is ridiculous. Okay. Uh, does manage to kill, kill off all the Goliaths, but three more are about to pop. Two are already here. Um... I am actually in shock that that's not Ling Tight on the top. I guess Jadon could have just won this game had he just attacked earlier with a bunch of Lings. He probably could have just killed them. More Goliaths are going to come out here, but more Mutas arrive as well. Mutas are getting very low, though, and the repair is pretty good. Keeps that alive for quite some time, and oh, a Muta that was just flying in. I guess that was a reinforcement Muta actually gets picked off. So that's a little bit rough. Down to just three Mutas. Two more arrive. Three. And he has a few more on the way. He's mining off of three gas, but just making Mutas and attack right now. Whereas double upgrades are going to finish soon. As long as Flash stays safe in his base, he starts the starport right as we hit halfway in this upgrade. So he is going to hit a super crisp 2-2. Like, this is going to be a really strong timing here. He is not going to move. Flash will not budge here. Mark my words. He is just going to sit and defend. And anything that comes in, he's going to repel with pure Goliath uh, turrets. And just a bunch of SCVs repairing. Picking off a few of the Mutas. The Goliath's number has been lowered once again. I don't think Flash is too concerned about that. As long as it doesn't lower to like a critical amount. Where he can't actually fight the Mutas anymore. Mutas here. Picking off a few more Goliaths. Lowering that count even further. And now we're kind of at that critical level. Where he might have to give up the supply depots. I'm not sure about that, but he might have to give that up. Plus one is done. And one one is not here yet. On after that last Goliath. He actually doesn't get this one. With just three HP, it survives. Which is kind of annoying here for Jadong. He leaves, but loses the last of his mutas here. Only two remain. Going back up to six now. Diving here. A turret gets added on just to add a little bit more DPS. And a Valkyrie pops out. That's interesting. Realizing that he needs a bit of a stopgap here. Plus two, plus two just starts. Wow. This up mech build is kind of crazy. And we're seeing why it's not really that popular anymore. Um, It's hard to hang on. If you're going to do something like double armory, how do you hang on against just the, the aggressive Mutalisk attacks uh, that can come out of these top pros? Well, if you get a command center first like a 14 cc and then uh build three factories i guess you can actually build enough goliaths to hang on and you don't have to build that many turrets he's only got three turrets here a couple of turrets there he did lose the valkyrie unfortunately but it got a good volley off um 2-2 two -two is getting there it's about 20 percent done and he's just still going to sit here. Okay, wait a second. Vultures make their way up to the top right-hand corner. And this is devastating. So many drones are about to go down here. It is super painful. I mean, this is like all the drones, man. He just lost every drone at that base. And you saw how many there were as well. That is incredibly, incredibly painful. Jadong... I mean, he's got to be swearing to himself right now uh, after losing that much. Just that one little slip out is actually going to change this game. It's going to completely flip it on its head. Third base? We really going to hold this third base? That's a little bit uh, optimistic. And it will get shut down. But uh, we, we see where Flash's head is at, right? <laughs> he's definitely going to go for a third eventually. His Goliath number really needs a, a bit of a boost, though, before he can make that happen. Now, we killed a lot of drones, but we didn't kill this army, so... 
Going out to take a third right now is a little bit crazy. Just gonna build it here in the natural now. More drones have been produced and you will get back to mining here with 40 workers. But the the height, the, the number of hatcheries is not the greatest. All right, we've got five hatcheries. Uh, we can produce quite a few um, hydras with that, but I mean, it's not going to be great. And there's the radiate as well. Oh, he gets the vessel though. Hold up. That vessel kill was big. He pulled out the um, irradiated muta there expertly. Oh man, flying in there, taking that last trade a little bit tough. But it's probably one of the last good trades he's actually going to get with these mutas, considering 2 2 is about to finish. There it is, 2 2. Just finishing up here. Third base, getting set down. And it's actually time to expand like two more times here, Jadon. I, I just don't know if he has it in him right now. He's got plus one on the way here for Hydras. Oh my goodness, that is scary. Plus one is on the way. And we're about to start 3-3 three, three for Flash. Uh, he's waiting on a bit more money here, it seems. And adding on some turrets over at this base. Getting that all set up. But there's plus three attack. Getting started. And he may start plus three armor here in a moment. And... I mean, we are accelerating so fast in this game for Flash. It's just nuts. He's going to have the Giga army here. Uh, lightning fast. Like, Jadong's head is going to spin. This thing has gone so fast. This, this army has been made so quickly. He's going to come in here and clear out some of these mines. I'll take care of the vultures that are out on the map. Uh, maybe one vulture gets over here, maybe kills a drone, but um, pretty good job there. Getting rid of all those mines and just taking a bit of map control. Wow, this is looking like a versus Protoss game, aside from all of the Goliaths. Having this big wall here. I was going to dive in and just try to gun down tanks, I guess? The Mutas are sacrificial, just trying to kill these tanks as much as possible, but the Hydras... Filtering in and getting slammed. A few Hydras come from the back, but they only get one tank and trade all of their lives. So, not the best trade here for Jadong. He really wanted to get in there and do something before uh, the, the mech really got off the ground here. But I think it's too late. You really do need to, like, triple expand even at this point. Just get into such a macro position. But... Maybe there's not even enough time to do that anymore. He's adding on a few more drones here and there. Another hatchery over at this fourth base. But, I mean, we're three base to three base right now. In terms of the actual mining, there's nothing over here. Uh, so definitely flash in a lead. And with the... If you consider the, the upgrades as well, it is a massive lead that Flash has established for himself. Moving forward now with the tanks and the Goliaths. Plus two is there. And everything needs to run away. Plus one is all that uh, we've managed to accumulate here for Jadong. Nine queens are on the way. That's the, that's the play right now. We need better trades. We have to use the queens to knock out the tanks so that the Hydras can fight uh, a little bit better. More toe-to-toe -to -toe with these Goliaths. But is that going to be enough? And will Flash allow that to occur? He doesn't have any vessels, which is the big counter to Queens. If you have a vessel and you uh, EMP is insane. Um, but even just a radiate on Queens uh, is good. It just kills the Queen and it makes it really hard to micro them as well. And sometimes you might even get like a bunch of Queens if uh, they're not being microed properly. Like you, you send them in. They all uh, throw off their uh, broodlings and then an irradiator two goes down and they all kind of clump up as they're flying away. Sometimes you get like five queens dead um, because the player is like microing all their hydras trying to, you know, capitalize on the work the queens did. More queens popping out here. 
I'm going to go to a big clutch of queens. But Flash is already on the move. He's at 163 supply. Plus three is done. Plus three armor is about to kick in. How crazy is this? He's got so much to work with. Daedong just backing away right now. But he doesn't have a lot, a lot of space to move. And once this high ground is held, what are you even going to do? I mean, Flash has already taken the most critical point on this map. He's already up here uh, on this high ground, this plateau here. And I don't know if Jadong has any shot of breaking this position, even with all the queens. Uh, it's a pretty good spot to, to fire a Broodlings on, but he doesn't have energy. He's like 20 seconds away from energy on all these queens. And Flash is going to hit this perfect timing. GG is called. Wow. A beautiful game here from Flash. It did look a little shaky in the early game. It did look a little... Yeah, maybe... He could have fallen apart. If a few things would have went a little bit better. You know, maybe a few more links have been added on by Jadong. Maybe he didn't, you know, build as many drones up here. If he had just gone, like, all in with Mutas and tried to break Flash while he was starting to build up here as he started double upgrades in his main. Uh, maybe it would have fallen apart, but it's hard to say. Flash handling everything very, very well and getting up into this. What is this abomination? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight factory, 17 minute, 180 supply, three, three. That is, wow. Wow, that is insane. That is so much stuff. And that is such a high upgrade count on mech at this level. Just wild. Just wild. And it's not like his opponent just sat back and was like, oh yeah, go ahead, do whatever you want. And just let Flash build up into this. He was on him almost the entire time. Just harassing him and fighting with him over and over and over again. And, and Flash, he manages to hang on. He makes it work. Just, it, it's it's so impressive. I'm blown away, guys. Thank you so much for watching this epic seven game series, I'm sure. We're in for some more amazing series out of Flash. So make sure to hit that subscribe button. To stick around for more daily doses of Brood War. That's it for this video, guys. I've really had a blast. And I'll see you in the next one.